this is editing Emma. Before I get started, I just want to say that I spent at least the last three hours, if not longer, working on getting the audio, the good quality audio to this video synced up to the other actual video part that I made, and I was in, unable to figure it out. So I decided it's better to just get this video put together and up on the internet than it is to sit around and end up not posting it because the audio isn't so great. So uh, just give it a watch and enjoy the video as it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Emma Welch, aka Lou Sherelle, and I wanted to try something a bit different today. I am on this canvas as I record this um, and I tried this many different times before now but apparently my iPad cannot handle uh, recording at the same time as having headphones like connected via Bluetooth to the iPad so I am going to record it on my phone or no computer and then put them together later and if you're hearing this video and everything is synced up then I figured it out We'll see. Um, anyway, so this is me going over um, my friend Seb, who is a wonderful artist and who I will link in, below in the description and um, you should check his art out. Anyway, um, he had mentioned just today or something um, in a comment that I, I use the keyboard um, a Bluetooth keyboard as a way to use shortcuts as I draw on my iPad. And it's true that I know quite a few friends who also have iPads and draw on them, but I am the only one that I know of, in person at least, that uses uh, a Bluetooth keyboard to draw. Um, I, you know, a lot of us did start with like Wacom Bamboos, or um, into those tablets or something where you just had these shortcuts you know memorized like you use them all the time but um, other people seem to have made the transition to the iPad a, a bit easier without needing this I will go absolutely crazy if I don't have a keyboard to use shortcuts on like I just can't sit here and constantly be using my finger all on my right hand which is the one I'm holding the pencil with to like go through these different menus and stuff I, I will go crazy and then like using both fingers to color drop or something wait yeah drive me nuts can't do it um, but that's okay because I don't have to and it's also not expensive to do this to set this up if you have uh, an iPad already which is not not cheap um, but if you have an iPad and you want to look into doing keyboard shortcuts, first I'm going to go over how I have it set up in Procreate because it's very quick and easy. Um, there's only but so much you can do in Procreate because Procreate is intended to solely be used on the iPad. So it's very well integrated to begin with, but then I will spend most of the video going over Clip Studio Paint which is much more complicated, but in a way that I love because you can do so much with it. Um, so first I wanted to show you which keyboard I have. It's not fancy. I got this keyboard, ha ha, it says, um, in 2018, in August. So it's been a while, like what, two and a half years? I don't do math. Um, so it was $20, that hasn't changed. And it works perfectly today. I have thrown it in a book bag, taken it on trips, banged it around, stepped on it probably. Uh, not hard, but you know, it's holding together very nicely and it's uh, very light and small. This says it's like 10 by six. Yeah, it's, it's very not a big deal. It doesn't take up much space on the table, but I will say if I'm trying to like do my iPad in my lap or something, it does. You can't use a keyboard that way, um, which is okay because I, I don't do stuff in my lap super often. So when I do, I don't mind having to use my fingers and stuff. Um, but 
Anyway, let's jump into it. I just did this like super fast to have something to demonstrate you things with. Um, this is like an old character that I haven't drawn in years and I don't really remember how to draw. But anyway, she's fun. Um, so. so, basics. You have your keyboard connected via Bluetooth. You open up Procreate. You don't have to do anything. If you hold down the, uh, on this keyboard, it's the Windows, Apple key, and the Command key, like three in one. If you hold that down, this menu pops up. And this menu, which you can see in full if you scroll, um, this is everything that you can do in Procreate um, with the keyboard. I don't use all of these because I don't need to use all of them all the time. Uh, for instance, with the color balance, I usually don't, I don't mind going into the menu itself to get that, um, but maybe if I painted more often in here, which I might end up doing one day, then I would actually have Command B or Control B memorized. But I will just show you the ones that I use most of the time. So the B is the brush. Uh, e, wait, so B as in boy is the brush. E as in elephant is a race. Apparently I have a big old eraser right now. Let's do something smaller, yeah. So E is a race. If you hit, for instance, B as in boy, two times, um, it opens up the menu. So you don't have to touch anything to open all of these. For some reason, I don't think there's a shortcut for this, the smear smudge tool. Don't know why. So that's a little annoying, but it's fine. Maybe one day they'll fix that. It's really not a big deal. Um, but if you do use it, you will have to touch it with your finger. Oh no, it's gonna fall off. Um, the layers button is accessible with the L, as in Labyrinth, because that's the movie I just watched last night. Um, which is really convenient because you gotta check it a lot and move things around. And there's another super great feature that the keyboard does um, that is connected to that. So if you hit, as this says, if you hit the space bar, it toggles the quick menu. You can change what's on the quick menu. I think you do it in preferences and yeah, I haven't even needed to do it in so long, I kind of forgot. If you go into here and you do gesture controls, quick menu, you, I think, I think here you can set up what's on the quick menu. Actually, maybe that's how you pull it up. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. Um, if you can't figure it out, I will figure it out and help you. Oops, I held that button down. Um, you can also set up different quick menus. Actually, this might be where you do it. Um, if you pull the quick menu up and hit the middle part, you can set up different ones. So if I had one for inking and then a different one for painting, um, those are situations where that could be useful. But anyway, um, you pull up the quick menu and I have it set up to do things that I do all the time, like clear layer. If I'm having a rough, rough time, can't get it right, just swipe it all away. Um, Let's see, also my favorite, flip horizontal. Ooh, looks wonky. Um, which is why flip horizontal is great. You can go up here normally, but like usually you'd have to go up here, hit canvas, hit that, and it just takes too long for me. So all I have to do, hit space, flip horizontal, and I can do it all the time. Now there we go, that's how you, flip, you, you hold down and then you can set the action. So that's what I did to just change it to what you currently see. But for instance, you can use this to set a new layer. And in the layers tab, if you hit L, you can see there is indeed a new layer there. Um, and we can, we can add like cat ears on top of her headdress. And um, ta -da. but I want that to be one layer. So I'm going to hit merge down. And like, theoretically, I don't even need to be checking to make sure all this is happening. Um, and then I can duplicate it because I want everything to be darker and then I can merge down again and have a new layer and um, make her eyebrows thicker. And, um, er, er, er. 
merge down again and hit L. Ta da! It's all on layer. I just use that stuff a lot. Um, other small things you can do, you can increase and decrease the brush size, as you can see on the left. Um, those are with the brackets. Uh, if you hold shift, I believe. Yeah. If you hold shift and do it, it increases it and decreases it by bigger uh, intervals. But um, another one that I use all the time is S for select. And you can select stuff. And so S is select. And if you want to move it, you can hit V as in voice. And just hit V once to start moving it and then hit it again to stop. Uh, if you want to select and make it go away, just hit it twice. It's easy peasy. Um, another thing you can do is color select. And this is another one I use nonstop. You hold alt. It's, it's the same as the computer. If you see, if you have used like Photoshop on the computer, hold alt, click, ta da, hold alt, click, ta da. It's easier than having my finger register over on the left, which is how I have it set up because it doesn't always register. But if you're clicking a button, it's, it's always going to work. Um, yeah, those are the main ones that I use in Procreate. So now I'm going to go ahead to Clip Studio Paint. I will have a little, maybe it's too late to say this, but I will have a little timestamp or something in the description. So people don't use Procreate, but they use Clip Studio Paint. They can jump ahead to here. Um, so now onto the Clip Studio Paint part of the thing, which is going to be a lot longer. And I'll try not to let it be too long, I guess. Uh, let me know if usually this stuff would be better in two videos. I'm still learning. And also, I, like, especially with the last video, I was just really nervous. <laughs> um, the only reason I'm slightly less nervous right now is because I don't feel good. So, the first video I wasn't as nervous because I was extremely tired. And this video, I'm just, I don't feel good at all. Uh, I'm nauseous, so I don't care enough to be as nervous. <laughs> still a little nervous um but i wanted to make this video because i thought it might help you guys and if even if it helps one person a little bit then that's that's all i want i think that it's great for us to share things that we've learned and you know save each other the trouble the time uh, and there are so many tips and tricks that I have no idea about for all of these programs um and i wouldn't know some of the stuff i know now if I hadn't seen videos and heard tips from friends and other artists. So, you know, it, it's hard to tell what people really know. Um, but these are especially Clip Studio Paints, a really big program. So it's easy to not know a lot of the hidden features. Um, but anyway, specifically with this Bluetooth keyboard situation in here, um, I just I did the same, like, the, um, same, same girl. What am I doing? Oh, I just wanted to mention that I use the sub view thing a lot. Um, and you can just set that up in like window. It's yeah, sub view, which is under navigator there. Um, and you can go between different references. I use this a lot. Uh, you can zoom in and like hit the little eyedropper and get one of those colors. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, I'm doing all these things and not explaining. So, thankfully, uh, the default settings for basic things are kind of similar in here, and the same as Photoshop. On the left, there are many more options than simply brush and erase. So, this top one is pen, this is the pencil. This is the brush. This is the like ink brush. I don't even know what they're called. I just use them. And this one's more like a soft airbrush. Um, and there is the eraser tool. So um, to get to this, I'll just run through the shortcuts. So if you hit P as in Polly Pocket one time, 
that gets you the top one. Um, it's the pin. If you hit it two times, or if you hit it just sequentially, so I already have the pin highlighted, um, it's going to act as if I hit it two times. So you hit it again, it goes to pencil. So I am not gonna lie, I left to eat dinner and I don't exactly remember where I left off, but I think I do. So again, to go down this list of tools over here. Um, okay, so you hit P once, P as in Peter Pan or Polly Pocket or uh, whatever, a pitcher of lemonade, P. Hit P again, P. And now it is the pencil tool. So one P is the pen, the second P is the pencil tool. And it will just keep going back and forth between the two of them if you hit P. So a lot of times, let's say I'm coming in to sketch, I'm on some other tool, I'm coming in to sketch with the pencil tool first, because I do use that a lot. Um, and so I will hit P and then P again, lets you sketch and whatnot. And then I'm like, oh, now I want to line it, you know. <laughs> um, okay, so that's taken care of. If you hit B as in boy or broom, yeah, uh, that will go to the brush tool, which makes a lot of sense. So um, whatever tool you have set up, by the way, you can switch it. And every time I go back to this brush tool, this would be the one that would pop up. But I usually have it on this blocking Beckett, which is a friend and brush. Um, I've mentioned his brushes before, and I do really like some of them. Um, it's an amazing deal. I mean, he gives you so many of them in, in one very reasonably priced pack, but I don't love the names of all of them. So that's all. Um, if you hit B again, now B as in boy, lets you do more things than the P in the way that it is. This is the default settings. I'll get into it, but you can change like everything. So default settings. If you hit B once, it's brush. If you hit it again, it is the airbrush. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, here I'm hitting C to go into transparency. I use it a lot. So instead of, it's kind of like erasing, but I like it better because I don't have to change my brush, you know, like, excuse me. I don't have to go to erase and then hit like soft and be like, oh man, it's not the same size I wanted. I can just hit BB and then have it on um, the transparency, which is, by the way, C. Um, then, yeah, it's nice. Um, if you hit it a third time, it goes into this fancy tool. I need, I've been very lazy. I need to remove this, honestly, from my shortcuts because I never use these. What are these? What does it even say? Decoration? Yeah. Um, I don't use that. <laughs> so what'll happen is I hit B a few times and I forget which one I'm on and then I start drawing and then there are a bunch of ginkgo leaves and it's great. Um, meaning not so great, but that is something that I can fix. You can change stuff like that because Clip Studio is pretty great like that. Um, and I will get into that in a second. So some of this, if anything doesn't work properly, uh, and lines up with how I say it, it's because I must have changed it in the settings and forgotten that it wasn't a default setting. But I think most of the things I'm gonna say at first are default setting stuff. Um, so the color pickle, color pickle, yes. Color picker tool um, is the same as procreate. You just hold alt and pick up colors. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Instead of going here and like picking it up and then having to go back, that's a pain in the booty, I don't wanna do that. Um, just hit Alt and pick up something and it's nice and simple. Um, okay, so another thing I use a lot, I've actually been trying to use it more often, is the Rotate tool. Um, 
I use my fingers and stuff to like zoom in um, like you know oh I just really I want to get this one color here and yeah uh, I need to have the right angle for my poor my poor uh, wrist so here I am but my fingers get tired of doing all this mess so um, what do I do you can hold the R key as in royal or rogue or raptor and if you hold it down do not let go and then take the apple pencil and move it across the screen it will rotate around the center point of whatever is on your screen um i think yeah so it's just very convenient it's easier on my wrist and my fingers than having to twist my fingers around all the time. Um, the problem is sometimes you can hit it too quickly and let go and don't, without realizing, which switches your entire tool over to rotate instead of just a temporary thing. Not a big deal. You can just hit like whatever tool you want again. Um, oh, see how we aren't perfectly lined up. If you look at the navigator, we are rotated and this is another tool I use all the time. I <laughs> I set this myself, so I don't know if I should go into this yet, but you can set it so any key on this keyboard will reset the rotation like that. So I can be doing whatever I want, hit for me the key that is just the number five and it resets it and it's great. So I'll go into that in a second, but that'll show you some of the potential of what you can do. <laughs> Sorry, that's what happens if you eat and then try to record something. Um, okay, so another one that is a default before we get into the craziness is U, as in umbrella or understated. Yeah, U. If you hit it one time, it gives you the option to do the like lines and shapes if you hit it again you can do frames and stuff i don't use them so honestly i should stop being lazy and remove that from the shortcut because i don't use it so it wastes time and then if i hit it a third time it goes to the roller tool so i can you know add rollers in and then make a nice border this is how i make panel borders yeah um with different brushes and actual squares and stuff but yeah um control z by the way works the same and to do the fill tool which i i use a lot for different things uh the shortcut is k as in uh what are k words kablooey yep kablooey it's all my brain got so oh, actually wrong K is the move layer tool, and this is actually something that I hit by mistake all the time. Don't do that. Kablooey, bad. Uh, G is what I'm looking for, and that's as in, all I can think of are like words that aren't so great for an example. Giraffe. <laughs> yeah. So G is in giraffe will get you to the gradients, um, like so. And if you hit, oops, if you hit G once, it's the gradients. If you hit it again, it is the fill tool. Um, so, you know, you can make your background color, whatever, or something. Um, so that is nice. Um, over here in the layers, actually, something that is very convenient is to merge a layer down. If you want to merge down with the layer below it, you hit Command and E. Ta-da! Now it's all one layer. Undo. Um, and that's just convenient. I think there's a way to do the clipping layer, but I, which I use all the time, but I think I keep forgetting <laughs> what it is. Apparently, Command G, Control G, is to put something in a folder, which is actually something I should start using. See, there's just so many things um, 
that so many parts of this program I don't even use, much less shortcuts I haven't figured out. Um, so I haven't looked it up, but there's definitely a shortcut to clip layer. And actually we can go ahead and look up what it is. So the way that you get into the shortcut settings from an iPad, you can also do this on a computer. That's how I knew how to do this on the iPad. I had already remapped a lot of stuff on the computer back when I used it years ago. And I knew that this was something that I would be able to do. Um, so in the pin pressure settings, no, no, no. See, that's me zoning out. I'm sorry. So hit the little clip studio icon, go down to shortcut settings. This menu can look intimidating, especially when you realize there are a bunch of other menus, but it's not too bad. Um, you just have to know what you want. An example of now I'll, I'll walk you through the different setups I have. Um, but for example, uh, that rotate, like resetting the rotation, um, you have to think, okay, so it's resetting the rotation, which is a part of the view function. So you go down view, reset rotation, and I had set it to five. To change it, you just click over here. It brings up the like righty boxy and you can change it to whatever. Um, actually, I if it doesn't work exactly automatically, you can hit add shortcut on the right or edit it. There we go, yeah, sure. Um, or delete it. If you try to, let's say, um, let's say I wanted for some odd reason to rotate 90 degrees, um, I used it en enough to make it a shortcut, which I don't. Um, I can edit the shortcut and hit five. And then it tells you at the bottom, five is already in use. And then it tells you what five is used for. Five is used to reset the rotation. If it's confirmed, the current shortcut, meaning the reset rotation, would be deleted. And I'm like, ah, oh, poop, that's already been used. So then I just hit delete. And it says, it warns you again, um, and you, you don't want the shortcut to be set. So yeah, sure. Um, I do that sometimes because I'm too lazy to look up which keys have already been used as a shortcut. Um, so I, I might do that again um, shortly. Though I do think there might be one that's already set up. Um, okay, let's see. Clip, clipping the layer. Um, for something like that, it might be in the tool. These are different tools. Um, for instance, here is the shortcut P that we use to go into the pin. Here is the shortcut P that we used to go in the pencil. P, P. Um, and I assume maybe this one's above this one, so it comes first. And then this one is above this one, so it comes first. Um, actually, I might go ahead and like... What is that, what is that tool called? Um, decoration. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm going to delete the shortcut. Ta-da! Um, I don't like the frame border one so I'm going to delete that shortcut there that will save my niece so much time um, but you can go more in depth if you had a very specific pencil you could click that one pencil um, and make that specific pencil a shortcut that would be helpful if you had two different types of pencils for instance that you used exclusively then you can make two different keys, each of those pencils, and switch between them easy peasy. Um, I like my setup right now, so I'm not going to do that. But um, sometimes with these, the problem is it takes a second to find what you want. Because it is kind of a mess of menus. But once you figure it out, uh, just look through everything. It's not so bad. Uh, let's see. Okay, I probably, hopefully, remembered to skip over that incredibly long period of time in which I was just staring at the menus. It took me a second, and that happens if you're looking for something in these webs of menus sometimes. But I was looking for that clip, um, the shortcut for clip, clipping mask. 
Um, I can words. And I looked under layer because like it makes sense. It's in the layer tab over on the right there. That's what I want. Um, but there are lots of different options in here. So it took me a while to go through them. But I finally found it um, under one of these layer settings. Haha. <laughs> um, clip to layer below. So apparently I had already set this because eight is something silly that I would have done. Um, so now if I hit eight, ta-da. And um, that's one problem. Like if you're setting these personal shortcuts up, it might be smart to write down what you do until you remember what the settings are. Um, I just wing it and it's fine um, because I'm used to it, but it might help avoid situations like that where I realize something I need to create, I add the shortcut and then I forget about it, which why did I waste all that time doing it if I'm not going to use it? Um, but yeah, so now I can easily clip and unclip without having to hit that little button myself. Um, so you do not have to set up your shortcuts like I do. I have a very weird and lazy setup because I don't, <laughs> I only care but so much. Um, and it works for me to do it the way I have it. But uh, regardless, I have the number one on my keyboard. This, again, this keyboard, it has the regular numerals at the top. It does not have a side pad. Um, if there is like the, the, new number pad on the right that gives you even more options to play with because I have used it on the computer number one on the numpad is different than the number one above the keyboards the like regular keys so that just gives you so many more options to play with um, but on the iPad which is what I usually use to draw one flips not the canvas but because it's clip studio if you look at the top right in the navigator that button that just got highlighted um, shows that it's the view is flipped. The canvas itself is not flipped. If I saved this and I did not realize that it was just the view that was flipped, it would save it like this because this is what the canvas looks like. Um, all of the navigator keys are in this navigator tool here. For instance, the rotation, the rotation. Um, and then this, no wait, <laughs> that fits it to screen or something. Um, but this to the right of the rotation keys will reset it. That is exactly what my number five does. Um, okay. So that's one and five. So for, excuse me, for number two, I have, uh, it toggles the transform tool. The transform tool is kind of annoying to get to because I have to click on this very specific box at the top of the screen to get into this mode. That annoys me to no end. So instead I can just hit the number two. And I do have that as one and two specifically because I use them all the time. Um, side note, if you don't know this, which maybe a lot of you do, if you're coming from Procreate, you might not. If you take this little handy dandy thing, which is the anchor, point of the tool, you can actually, let me show you better. Um, if you select, oh, it always does that in Procreate, or I mean, Clip Studio. If you select like the head here, hit the transform tool, you can put the anchor point somewhere that you want it to rotate around, and then it'll rotate specifically around that point you made. That's how I move like arms around to adjust anatomy or move the head like this. Um, it's very helpful. So that's just a random tip you may or may not know. So that's number two, uh, transform tool. And I, if I was on the computer, I could hit escape to cancel it instead of hitting this button. But because it is the iPad, what does the escape uh, button do. Let's see. Nah, it just goes to the home screen. Yep, so annoying, but it's not that hard to hit, just hit cancel with the Apple Pencil. Not a big deal. Three. 
Apparently I have that to adjust the tone curve. Um, I do use that often enough, but I haven't used it recent enough for me to remember. So yeah, three I have as tone curve, which is the same as levels, is it? No, it's not. This is the literally tone curve, so you can adjust different colors. I actually do use that a lot. Um, anywho, four toggles the grid for me. The reason that I have this is because sometimes, well, I guess there are certain times where I would, I have needed it, but, um, I don't have it set up right now, but I have used the grid to draw straight lines and stuff, but it's really annoying with the small boxes. Anyway, I don't use that one a whole lot, so I could arguably change it, but, um, the reason I have it as four is because four is a very even and geometric number and therefore my brain can remember what that shortcut does. You know what five is, it resets the rotation. Six, I have, <laughs> this is just how my brain works, um, I have six to flip horizontally because, you know, six is three plus three, which is symmetrical. I don't know, somehow my brain understands that six is the number to horizontally flip something. Um, and that's to flip a specific object, not the whole canvas. Seven. Oh, I do use seven a lot, actually. Seven is really, really cool. Um, not specifically the number seven, but the thing that I have it set up to do. Um, I have this set up to do the color gamut. It's the same thing. And I can just show you super quick how this is totally not related to what I'm supposed to be making the video about, but I use this a lot. So, okay, let's say I was making like a flat layer with some random color here and a different color here. Wait, let's make it more different. Colors that are like pretty different from each other and they can be ugly. It doesn't matter. Whatever colors you got going on. <clears throat> Excuse moi. Oh my gosh. Thank you. And let's say I also want, I want like specifically her headdress, but only the top part because I'm lazy to have this. Um, now what's the point of that? <laughs> so if you hit color gamut in the selection menu, or I have it set up for to be number seven, I can just click uh, on the green and it selects everything that is that color green. And what I can do there is use this as a, a layer to just pull from for the flat colors. I can make a new layer and I can fill it or I can uh, go into this brush tool and you know add a gradient or something um, it's very convenient um, and then in this same exact layer like I try to keep my layers as few as possible because I go crazy otherwise um, so I don't need to use the color gamut because well, I guess it is separated by the green. Um, optionally, you could just select, select, but that's no fun. Just click the one time in the color gamut. And then, um, you know, you can color inside that area. And then I'm like, ah, oh, I need to go back and fix something with the, the clothes. Um, the, the catch is you do have to switch back to this layer every time you do it. If I tried to do it when I was still selected on the other layer, it just wouldn't work. It would be like, no. So, it's annoying, but I'll live. Um, yeah, so, oh, I wanted to go change. See, it's still so... Fine, I'll mess with that later. Um, I wanted to make it darker. You can do that. Um... Just a tip. I, I like that. It's a more recent thing that I've figured out. Uh, seen other artists do it too, so it's not like I'm the only one who uses these shortcuts and stuff. Eight, I have set up to do the, um, 
thing that I had previously mentioned. Clip. Clipping mask. There are words in my brain. Um, okay. <clears throat> nine I have set up to... I'll have to block that out. Um, nine I have set up to um, access my photos. <laughs> Something that bothers me with Clip Studio Paint is the fact that... Or at least it used to bother me more. You save it in you save everything into the files. If you import it, an Im, if you import an image, it pulls it from the files. To get at the photo library on your device, <laughs> on your iPad, you have to create new from photo library. You can see here, I had that set up to be number nine because I would get really annoyed um, at the time I was pulling a lot from my photos. I'd get annoyed having to go into the file folder every time, so I just made that my number nine. So, um, yeah, now that's just my nine button, and I do use that a lot. Excuse me. Okay, I don't know what zero does, which is a bit ominous, but I'm pretty sure I set it to do something, and I'll have to look at that later. This is why you're supposed to write these things down. Um, but that's fine. I really only have one more thing that I use all the time. Um, besides, actually, the backspace clears a layer. Again, I clear layers a lot, so it's pretty convenient. Just don't hit it by accident and then save and not be able to reverse that. <laughs> I've never done that, actually, so it's not that easy to do. Um, I have F my F1 button to be the image resolution. This is something that is super annoying to get at uh, in the menu. You have to hit edit and hit it either image resolution or canvas size from there. But you can see here that T14, that's what it shows for my F1 key. So I can hit that for image resolution or I can hold down FN. Oh, I do this every time. Okay, that is because I don't use it often. I have it not to be FN, but control, <laughs> control F1. And that does the canvas size. Um, which, you know, is nice to have access to easily. So that's pretty much it. I mean, like I could go on about random other things that I do, but a lot of it's because I have really weird habits. <laughs> um, and hopefully that helped somebody out there even a little bit. Let me know if you have questions. Um, I, I'm i sorry if I ramble and also am bad at focusing and stuff, but I am trying to improve and just, you know, ultimately I just want to be able to, to connect with other creators out there. Um, so I would love to hear about any projects you guys have going on and um, just hear a bit about your background and especially about uh, any weird idiosyncrasies you have in the way you work or any shortcuts I don't know of or you I didn't mention so you wanted to see if I know about them um, I would love to learn weird weird things or habits you have when you work in these programs because there's so many different ways to use even the simplest drawing program um, but Thank you for tuning in and definitely subscribe and like and look out for future videos. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to get better and better as time goes on. Thank you for sticking with me and seeing how I grow. I am launching that comic on the 18th of May called Blood Knot. I'm very excited to have it out there. And I'm working very hard to build as much of a buffer as I can before it's out. Uh, if you don't know anything about it or you haven't si signed up for the newsletter yet, please go to below in the description and I will have a link where you can go to the site uh, and just sign up for that newsletter. It'll just give you an email when it's launched so you don't have to worry about forgetting about it. Um, so I'm excited to hear about your habits and what you're working on. Okay, have a good day. Mm.
Um, brush. <laughs> Bye. Smiley cat. Don't talk back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye.